Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. And of course, last night saw three separate by-elections. It was highly likely that the Tories would lose all three, but they actually managed to hold on to one, Uxbridge, by the skin of their teeth. There was less than 500 votes in it. But Uxbridge wasn't won by the Conservatives. There's only one man responsible for a Conservative win in Uxbridge. And that man, of course, is Sadiq Khan. Uh, but more of him in another video later. But it was his insistence on, on spreading the ULES, um, the ultra low emission zone, across the whole of London that basically reject, meant that you know, the people in Uxbridge rejected uh, the Labour candidate. Now, had they not been talking or looking to spread this, this ULES across the whole of London, Uxbridge would most definitely have fallen to the Labour Party. And that would have been the first time Labour would have had that seat ever since it had been formed. However, unlucky as Labour were there, um, but mainly down, of course, to uh, Sadiq Khan, they were fortunate in Selby. And I say fortunate as in unbelievably victorious. Selby had a 20-odd thousand majority for the Conservatives. To take that seat, Labour needed a new record swing. A swing unprecedented in any election prior to this one. A swing that everyone said was virtually impossible. And they got it. Now, the fact that Labour held Uxbridge, even though it was dead close, and Rishi Sadak will know this, he knows it wasn't that the Conservatives were liked, it's just that people voted against the ULES and so voted him so that they could fight it and send a message to Sadiq Khan. He knows that. He knows he should have lost Uxbridge. And he then looks at Selby and sees a record swing to Labour. It will not make comfortable reading. He knows that within 16 months he must have an election. It's looking increasingly like November next year. He's got 16 months in which to turn around the fortunes of his party, but he's not going to be able to do it. Not while interest is high and people are just handing their hard-earned money over to the banks for no reason, because high interest rates aren't bringing inflation down. They cannot bring inflation down because it isn't people spending on stuff they would otherwise you know, not spend on. It's people spending money on things they absolutely have to, food and fuel doesn't matter how high, how high interest rates go, that won't reduce the cost of food and fuel. And so inflation stays high. I don't think he's doing it for that reason. I think he's deliberately doing it to give the banks money, to make people's lives awful, to ensure the banks foreclose on these houses, then the banks own the houses and the banks can rent them out. And it's all part of that push for total dominance of you know the population. I honestly think that. However, we need to get rid of this Tory government. We need to get rid of all governments, really. But this Tory government in particular has been there too long. It's run out of ideas and it's now doing things that are directly and purposefully harming people to the point of harming people's health, safety and even endangering their lives. He knows he cannot win this election, but he's he's OK. He's a non-tax paying billionaire with a green card. So it doesn't really matter to him what happens to the people of this country, so long as he obeys the WF paymasters who look after him. Then he knows he is assured of, you know, that eliteness come the, uh, the complete dominance of the people of Earth by these billionaires. Not good enough for us as we sit in our 15 minute ghettos, but he's OK quaffing champagne at 30,000 feet in a private jet. Time to change, I think. There was another election, of course. It was down uh, in Frome, in, uh, yeah, Somerton and Frome in Somerset. Uh, and that went to the Lib Dems. And uh, the Tories came second, but by God, did they come a long way second. And indeed, there weren't many parties uh, that actually held their deposits. The Greens lost deposits, the Lib Dems lost deposits. And in uh, the, the Somerton and uh, Frome one, 
Even Labour lost its deposit. That's how few people voted for, for them. We're going to take a very quick look. I'm not going to go into any depth on this because we're covering most of it in the header here. But uh, we're going to have a quick look at this just to show the sort of uh, the figures that was received on, the, on the, uh, the election last night. And it was definitely, definitely an absolute drubbing for the Tories. It was a rejection of everything. And they must count themselves extremely lucky that they managed to hold Uxbridge, but only by a gnat's whisker. 495 seat, uh, votes. Tiny. Even went to a recount, it was that close. Anyway, we'll take a look at this. Here goes. Right, so this is a sort of a larger article, which I'm not really going to go into, uh, but they're mo mo mostly talking about the Selby guy. And there he is, he's 25. Uh, he's now the baby of the house. And to be fair, if you actually look in the background, you'll see the man there, another candidate, I don't know who he is, uh, but he's holding a dummy. Um, and I think actually that the dummy had a higher chance of winning than the Tory candidate in that particular election. Uh, the Tories, you know, they, they, they just... <laughs> they're just finished. They're just finished now. People see them for what they are, and they're done. Um, and there she is. She's the... Um, She's the, the Lib Dem candidate down in uh, Somerton and Froome. And um, she she won last night. She had a massive uh, victory. 11,000 votes uh, ahead of the uh, the Conservative candidate. Uh, that's uh, Sarah Dyke. Make of that what you will. So here's the Uxbridge result. And as you see, um, the Tories got it. But look, it was a damn close run thing kind of thing. Uh, Labour were only 495 votes behind, and they'd have had that. 496 votes. So you'd only talk, you know, if only 250 Tory voters that have gone to the Labour, another 250, um, you know, you'd, you'd have had a, a Labour MP. The third party were the Greens, and they lost their deposit. Everyone else lost their deposit. Only uh, the, the Tories and Labour managed to retain their deposit. Uh, and there's Somerset, Somerton and Froome, obviously uh, massive there. I mean, you know, 55, nearly 55% of the electorate voting for one single party. Uh, and that's, you know, that goes to show. And that was a and that was a Tory party. That was a Tory seat, remember. So that goes to show how disillusioned people are uh, with this current Conservative government. Because this current Conservative government has overseen one of the worst periods of, of poverty-inducing deliberate policy uh, in, certainly in my 56 years. Um, when they were talking about, oh, we may have to raise interest rates, and they said, oh, there'd be small interest rates spread out over a long period, and they've just gone boom, 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 every month, sometimes not a quarter percent, a half percent, bang, 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 up, boom. It's been shocking. It's been absolutely shocking. And no wonder nobody's got money, but they're not, the people weren't spending money on luxury goods beforehand. They were spending it on food. Food inflation is driving that, so it's not surprised this. Now, we need a government to come in and we need a government to come in and reduce interest rates and let people actually put food on the table for their children. Anyway, and here's Selby. And uh, the Greens there were the only party that, well, obviously the Tories as well, but they, even the Greens, only just, only just by about, and it was only something like 40 votes uh, meant that they saved their deposit. Everyone else who was on the, on the thing, you know, their, their deposit went. But that is an absolute, Drubbing. Now they 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 overturned a twenty thousand majority, and now they've got a four thousand majority. It was it's something like a twenty percent swing. I can't remember the exact number, but it it was an absolute massive swing. I'm see if it's mentioned in here. Will they give the rate of the swing? And they're not saying what the swing was. Uh, no, I'm afraid they're not saying what the swing is, which is, I, I could go and find it somewhere else. Uh, but it was absolutely a massive, a massive swing. Now, Rishi Sunak could be sitting there today. He's going to have to have a war cabinet this morning and he's going to have to work out what the hell he can do. And I think if the Conservative Party wants to have any chance whatsoever, whatsoever, of not being totally humiliated at the next election, there is only one course of action open to them the only course of action Rishi Sunak with immediate effect has to resign as leader walk away and walk out of politics resign his seat 
and go. And put his seat up for re-election. And get Boris to stand in that seat. And come. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think Boris is a great person. I think he's an awful person. But he's the only person, the only single person, who can save the Tories. They won't win the next election, you understand, even if he came back. That's, that's gone. They're, they've lost this election. It's finished. What they can do, though, is save face and maybe not lose it by quite so much. That's all they've got. Because Rishi Sunak, or Mowgli, as we call him, has utterly destroyed this country with his policies. It was him as Chancellor who kept giving billions upon billions away, public money, given to private individuals, all his mates and his chums. He put up the national debt to levels that have never, ever been seen in this country. Even during the Napoleonic Wars, the Boer Wars, World War I, World War Two. We never had debts at that percentage of gross domestic product before. And then he becomes leader eventually. Three attempts, two attempts to try and get there. Not voted in by the membership. No. The members that rejected him. He hasn't been voted in by the people of the country. No, he won't. And he never will. He's a man who's fallen into office because they didn't like the last one. He's dangerous. He's a WEF shill. We need to get rid of him and we need to get rid of this total government. And I'll stop and I'm going to come up. Personally I say roll on the next election. We know it's going to be a Labour victory. I'm not keen on that either. I mean I honestly I hate all parties but I think it's different um, this time. Certainly Labour under, under uh, Corbyn could never be elected. That would have just been destructive beyond belief. But even under Keir Starmer, I think it's dangerous because I think he is at heart a pro-European, a pro-Brexiter. I think he doesn't look at Britain's um, policies first. I think he looks to see what he's being told by others. I also feel, and this is, a, this is genuinely true, I do think that if, let's say, one Friday morning, Keir Starmer comes out, you know, he's been announced that he's the next Prime Minister, Labour won the election. He's coming out and he's making his speech. And he's saying it's a good, no, you know, grand new start for Britain, blah, blah, blah. All the usual, all the usual guff these people say. And then within 24 hours, there'll be a coup. He'll be out and somebody else will be in. Someone far left will be in. And uh, that's how it is. And I, I honestly think that that's what will happen. And we will have a far left. But she's got not, not Angela Rayner. I've got a story about her as well. But Angela Rayner is just awful. Uh, but who else have you got? Because Diane Abbott, would you reckon? You know, this is what this is. This is the measure of the Labour Party. When in your front bench at the moment, you've got the likes of uh, Angela Rayner and, and Diane Abbott and all these people. They're all morons. They're all fuckwitted morons. They're dangerous. You can't have the Lib Dems. They're all crypto Marxists. Bonkers. The Greens out of their tree. Who have you got? You've got no one. You've got no one. All political parties are filled with awful, obnoxious people, all in it for themselves, none of them giving one flying shit for the people of this country. Anyway, I could go on for a long time about that. I shall stop. Thank you very much for watching. If you like what you're seeing here on the channel, please do hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, leave a like, leave a comment, please share the video. And until next time, stay safe, stay well, vote independent, and goodbye.